and PowerShell 5.0 debugging. And um, my intent is to, uh, that's about me, uh, I'm a uh, software developer on the PowerShell uh, core team. Um, my intent is to, uh, basically this is going to be just a, a show and tell of some of the new features, some of the new debugging features. Uh, the intent is to keep this fairly light on the slides and hopefully a little heavier on the um, demos. Louder. Louder? Yeah. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll stand closer. There we go, to the uh, Hold microphone. The mic huh? Hold the mic it's weird. It's just right in my face. I, I don't do this very often, so this, this, is, this is very weird. Okay. Uh, the agenda, uh, what I want to go through is uh, debugging uh, running scripts, scripts that are already running. Um, uh, the ability to uh, author um, uh, and uh, run and debug uh, scripts over remote session. Um, debugging jobs. Uh, then I want to talk a little bit about uh, what run spaces are and why you should care about them. Um, the debugging run spaces and then finally uh, attached to process debugging. Let's get started. Uh, to begin with, uh, debugging uh, running scripts. How do we debug uh, scripts that are already running? And um, what we've added in PowerShell 5.0 is the ability to, um, inside um, the PowerShell console, the PowerShell IC, to uh, just drop running scripts right into the debugger. Um, and uh, uh, for the ISC, uh, the way you do that is very straightforward. You can use the Control B uh, key combination. Uh, or you can uh, use a new uh, menu, uh, debug menu, break all uh, menu item. Uh, in the console, it's a little bit different. It's uh, the control break key combination, uh, and that'll drop from the script into the, uh, the console command line debugger. Um, and this works uh, both on local and remote sessions. So to, uh, so to demonstrate this, um, very straightforward. Oh, how do I? Uh, Windows P. Windows P. Yeah, it's, it says Media Connect. I'm, I'm running Windows 10 Preview on my on my laptop. So hopefully it'll work correctly. I'm not sure. Yeah. We can see it here. <laughs> How many engineers does it take to figure out Windows? <laughs> I was wondering if I was going to regret. Yeah, what you can do too, you can ask to move this screen. Just another option. You know, you can just move it right there. Then, he, then you'll have to watch it from there. From and there. then you're going to have to. Okay, that's another option. Okay. You can ask to move it. You can do with that. If you are okay with that. Oh, yeah, that's fine. Okay. Where's the bot here? I can. I don't see the mouse. Okay. So this is more difficult than when I was just doing it on my laptop, but I think this will work. Um, so I just opened up a, uh, a script file, uh, and this is just uh, so these are just some functions that um, um, I've created just for demonstration. Uh, it's basically uh, a loop doing some... Uh, make the font bigger. Oh, I'm sorry, make the font bigger. Can do. <laughs> I can't see. Control plus. Control plus, got it, thank you. <laughs> ah, there we go. There you go. Um, so anyway, just, it's called a long-running script. It just basically runs in a loop, um, doing some commands and function calls. It's got to sleep in there so that it runs for a while. Um, and anyway, to demo this, it's very straightforward. Just F5 to, to run the script. Um, and then while it's running, 
you can go to the debug. Uh, there's a new uh, menu item called break all, and it just basically drops the script uh, right into the debugger. And then once you're in the debugger, you can do normal uh, PowerShell script debugging. You can set breakpoints. Um, um, you can hit F5, let it run again. Yes, uh, the question was, I remember. <laughs> the question was, uh, can you, can you uh, get to this uh, functionality through the API? And yes, you can. It's, it's a, um, a method on uh, the debugger object that you can uh, set uh, the debugger to, I think it's called step mode, set step, step mode. Um, so that is possible. Um, and, and that's uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, when, once you're in the debugger, uh, you can set breakpoints. And you, why would you want to use this? Uh, a lot of the times, uh, you don't need to. If you have a script that runs real quickly, you want to debug it. You, you just bring up the script, you set the breakpoint, and you run it. But sometimes, if you have a you know very complex script or a script that's running uh, for a long period of time, you know, it can be annoying to have to always stop it, adjust your breakpoints, and start it again. In this case, you can just drop right into the debugger and. Um, um, and then de debug at that point. Um, and again, this works both for local and uh, remote sessions. So how do I get back then to the, um, the slideshow? Oh, okay, does it? Oh, that's cool. Uh, next, I'd like to talk about um, the ability to um, author uh, scripts, uh, run scripts, debug scripts uh, over a remote session. Uh, and again, this is uh, implemented in PowerShell 5.0 in the ISE. Um, and basically, the ISE now supports the full range of uh, the ability to, to uh, open, create new scripts on a remote session, files on a remote session, um, edit them, run them, debug them. Um, you know, run them again. So that whole iterative loop for uh, um, um, developing scripts can be done over remote session. And um, as a consequence, also uh, in the ISC, if you happen to be just running a script um, and you break into uh, the debugger on a remote session, uh, it will bring up the script source file so that you can do a visual uh, debugging uh, question. Yes, uh, for the target system that you're debugging on, is there a required PowerShell for it? Uh, and the question is, is there a required PowerShell version for the target system that uh, you're, de you're debugging on? And um, there's kind of two parts to, uh, to the answer. Uh, for debugging, the target has to be uh, PowerShell version uh, 4 or greater, because uh, remote debugging was implemented in version 4. Uh, for the PS edit, uh, you can actually uh, target down to, I believe, version 3.0, because the way it's implemented um, is, is using um, existing PowerShell remoting and functionality. Uh, I can talk about that a little bit later if you're interested. Uh, one thing to keep in mind that this is implemented through the, um, the ISC command line PS edit function. Uh, previously, the edit function was available on local sessions, and now it's also available on remote sessions. And what the PS edit function does is allow you to basically open a file for editing. Um, the ISC open file dialog does not, it does not support uh, opening files over a remote session, at least not yet. That's something that I would like to see changed in the future, but right now we have to use the psedit function, so I'll demo that. So I'm just going to put out a debugger here. And I'm going to start an uh, interactive remote session in the ISC, and I'm just going to do it by uh, using the NRPS session uh, command line. Uh, there's other ways to do it in the ISC, but this is probably the quickest. And you see that the command prompt changes and lets you know that you are uh, in a um, a remote session connected to the Pi dash lap one. And while you're in that session, you can navigate. Now, if, if you type uh, PS edit 
and you, you do uh, command uh, completion, you see that there's a PS edit function available for you now, and you can use that um, to open files. Uh, and it will work, you can open a single file, you can open multiple files, it also supports wildcards. So I'll just open all the files, uh, script files in um, this directory. You see that all the files are opened up now in the ISC for, uh, and they're available for editing. <laughs> I have I have these uh, bifocals, and so I can't I can't see the screen when I look down. Um, so I have to keep moving my head down. So I apologize for that. So anyway, if you look at the IC uh, file tab, you'll see that um, it's annotated now with bracket remote file to let you know that this is a remote file, not a local file that's open. Um, if you mouse over it, you will get a tooltip that's showing you the location of the file. Unfortunately, and this is a bug, it's showing you the location on the local machine. It's a temporary location where it's copied the file over. What you really want to see is the location of the file on the remote machine, and that will get fixed. But now that you're in it, you can do um, editing. And I won't, I won't go too far, but just to demonstrate that, okay, we've modified the file, and then we go to debug, we say run, and the IC says, oh, well, we need to save the script before we can run it. And so when you click OK, what it'll do, it'll save the script on the remote machine, and then run the script on the remote machine. Also, I forgot, I also want to show that uh, at the same time, you can set breakpoints. So now the script is running on the remote machine, it hits the breakpoint, and you can go through the whole iterative process. You can um, examine the script, investigate it, change it, um, um, and then re re rerun it again. So you have that whole um, development cycle over remote session. And then I just also want to demonstrate that um, if you just run a um, file on the command line, it has a breakpoint set. When the breakpoint is set, the file is opened up. And then once the file is opened up, um, you exit the debugger, the file remains open, um, and you can edit it and, and uh, do your uh, development. One last thing is when you exit the uh, remote session. Oops. All of the um, remote files that are open are automatically closed because there's no longer uh, a remote session that can be used to manage them. Uh, question? Yes, since you're using um, inner PS session, you're going to have the one hot issue so you can't get off the remote machine, right? That's correct, yeah. So you have the, the, the single hop uh, restriction. Oh, I'm sorry, the question was, when you use enter PS session, um, you are restricted uh, to the PowerShell um, uh, single hop uh, issue. In other words, once you are remote into that session, um, you're not allowed to go off box uh, unless you go through some you know, uh, credit, uh, credential delegation or, or, or you know, some of the mitigation. Okay. When you uh Save them, or does it auto save or uh, start to change? Not right now. That that is actually a bug. It should uh, do that, um, and that is an issue that's being tracked, and that will be fixed. Another thing that we talked about too is uh, if you look at the uh, file uh, menu, the save as is disabled, so it don't let you do a save as. Uh, we're thinking about changing that so that um, you can actually do a save as onto the local machine, because it could be cases where you're you're working on a script on a remote machine and you'd like to have a copy on your local machine. That's kind of a little hanging fruit. Uh, again, something I think that uh, hopefully we'll get, get in. Uh, question? Sorry, just one more. On the, the way it actually pulls the files back and forth, is it over the PS remote channel or is it a file copy, like a, a EOC copy? 
It is, it is over the PS remote. I'm sorry, the question was when the file is being pulled over uh, from the remote to the local machine, uh, is it done over the PS remote channel? And, and the answer is uh, yes. In fact, I'll show you a little more detail here. If you look at the uh, script function PS edit, that's on the remote machine. It's actually a very simple script. Uh, what it's doing, uh, so what happens is that when uh, the IEC um, enters into an interactive session with the root target uh, computer, um, it uh, creates this uh, PS edit function uh, on, the, um, on the remote machine. And what this PS edit function does is uh, use um, um, PowerShell remote event forwarding uh, to forward information uh, through the remote channel back uh, uh, to the client. Well, highlighting is not working. It's kind of hard to see from here. But, but you can see that basically what it does is it just gets the file information, file uh, path information, file content, and then, and then sends it back through um, uh, a PowerShell uh, um, remote event forwarding mechanism. So it's very, actually fairly straightforward. Also, if you... If you look at uh, events subscribed in your remote session, you, you'll see that um, there's a new event that was created there for you. And this is a special event uh, that's designed to be to, to be forwarded over the remote session. So all this stuff that gets created when you enter into the interactive session, when you exit, that all gets cleaned up. And you see as I exited the session, the, uh, the open um, remote files are closed automatically for you. Oh, so the next thing I'd like to talk about is debugging jobs. Um, the question is, can I debug script running in a job? And of course, the answer is yes. There's a new um, uh, command called uh, debug job. <laughs> and um, basically what it does is it um, attaches the host application debugger um, to the running job. Um, and the effect of that is that the running job, which is a background uh, running pro uh, you know, process, is moved to the foreground um, while it's attached to the debugger. Um, and when you're done uh, debugging, um, there's a detach command and it reverses that process and the, the um, job goes back to the background and continues running. I'll demo that real quickly. Oh, uh, also, this is implemented and works for PowerShell background jobs, or the jobs that are started when you use the start um, job commandlet. It's also implemented for remoting jobs. That's when you create jobs with the remote command with the as job uh, switch, and also works for uh, workflow jobs. Scheduled jobs? Oh, and the question is, does it also work for scheduled jobs? And no, it's not actually implemented for scheduled jobs, but you can actually, if you wanted to, use, when I get to it, the attach to process debugging, if you, if you want to debug that way. Uh, the question is, is it regular scheduled jobs and PowerShell scheduled jobs? So the PowerShell scheduled jobs that are, that is a job type for them? And I'm not sure I understand the question. Um, there's only one kind of scheduled PowerShell job. Are you talking about just scheduled tasks? Yeah. Oh, yeah, and the question is, can you debug um, script running in scheduled tasks? And the answer is yes, you can, because it's running a process and there's ability to attach your process and you can debug um, run spaces, well, we'll get into in just a minute. Um, so I'm kind of getting used to this. <laughs> so I'm just, I'm just going to um, start a job.
and the job is just going to run um, some script. Same, same script file I use for the entire demo. You'll get tired of it soon. Yeah, and we see that the, it's a background job, it's running, um, and now in the background, now we'd like to debug it. We use the debug job command. And we just pipe it to the debug job command, and then um, what you see again is that it's, it's broken in the debugger. Uh, if, if you look at the command prompt, it, it kind of tells you what's going on. Um, you're, you're in the debugger, you're attached to the job number three, if you can see it. Um, and at this point, now we can do just sort of normal uh, PowerShell debugging. You can set breakpoints, you can step through the code, in and out of functions, uh, all that sort of thing. Um, and then when you're done, you actually have two options when you're done. You could actually use the debugger quit command, but that does is uh, stop the job, stops it from um, running the script. I have a question. You did get job, it was job two, when you attached it to job three. Oh, uh, I'm glad that you saw that. There, there's a reason for that. What was the Oh, I'm sorry. The question is, um, when we started the job, it said job two, and when we attached debugger uh, to the job, it's now saying job three on the command line. And the reason is, the way that jobs were implemented, um, is that there's a um, parent job and then child jobs. And there's always a parent job. Even if you're only running one job, there's always a parent job. And what you see when you do get job is the parent job, but the actual job that's running the script is a child job, and it's job three, because they just, you know, the name just gets incremented uh, sequentially. Um, and what the debugger is interested in is, what it shows you is what the child job, the actual job that's running the script is, because it's possible to have multiple child jobs. Um, so you want to see the exact job that you're debugging. Um, and in this case, there was just one child job, which is job three, which is incremented after job two. Oh, okay. Uh, so I think that's all I wanted to show here. Uh, again, there's two things you do. You can do a quit and it stops the job from running. Uh, you might want to do that, or you can do a detach. And a detach does is detaches the debugger. Um, and this is the, 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 the application host debugger. It detaches it from the job, and then the debugger is um, directed back to the, uh, to the host run space. Uh, question? Uh, the question is, if you have multiple jobs um, uh, inside a parent job, um, wh what is the experience at that point? Um, and the way this works, if you have like multiple jobs, uh, like say you have job two, parent job, you have job three, four, and five child jobs, um, all of the jobs get debugged in order, sort of like um, um, in a native debugger where you're, you're debugging with multiple threads. So as you, as you step through um, the code, you'll see that the, um, uh, the, the, will, the, the command line will change from job two to job three to job four um, as you step through. Um, it's a little bit confusing. Um, usually, if you have multiple jobs and you're running the same script, uh, uh, but they might be run on different computers, uh, and so if, it's kind of confusing to be jumping between job two, three, and four. What I usually do is I just quit the jobs um, and just debug them on because it's the same script. Uh, but, but it does support multiple uh, job debugging. Uh, question? When you're uh, running in the console, like the interactive console, um, running up as a function to jump to drop into the debugger, can you then step through like your right debug statements that are in that function? I think the question is, uh, when you're in the console and you drop into the debugger, and the question is, can you then um, step through? The right debug statements, the function that you created? Oh, the right, I mean any statements, or just right debug statements? I guess any statements. Yeah, I, I, sorry, that. so the question is, uh, kind of how does it work when you're in the, uh, the console uh, debugger? Um, and, the, and the answer is it actually works the same way. The console command line debugger is, is a little bit different. Uh, it's not as nice to use as uh, the, the IC GUI debugger, um, but it works well in a pinch, um, and there are basically, there are command 
that you can use when you're in the debug mode on console. And there's kind of list the uh, scripts. You can see you know, what the script source is. And you can step through. And as you step through, it has a little asterisk and shows you where you are in each of the um, uh, script lines. You can step into and out of function. So it's a full uh, script debugger, uh, but it's just command line based. And in this case, oh, I'm sorry, question. Oh, that's a good question. The question is, uh, when I am uh, uh, debugging script, and the script has an invoke command, and the invoke command can be like to uh, another remote machine, can I step into that script and invoke command? And the answer is, no, you can't. Uh, it's possible. Actually, I prototyped that, um, but it didn't make the cut for the feature. It wasn't sure if that was uh, something that people would use. Um, but if it's important yeah, enough, it's something we can add. <laughs> okay. So I would just a uh, oh, question. Do I have to worry about an attacker uh, connecting up to my machine and debugging my scripts? <laughs> you always have to worry about an attacker. <laughs> uh, oh, um, the question is: Do I have to worry about an attacker connecting to my machine and debugging my scripts? And uh, I guess the answer is that the security is the same security that you have. Um, um, that's built into uh, to, uh, a partial remoting. So uh, it has the same requirements for credentials and uh, you know, the ability to uh, remote into the machine. You have to have the you know, correct credentials and get it remoting into a default endpoint or a custom endpoint. And, and, and so that can be customized. Um, so yeah, you also have to worry about an attacker, but uh, there are ways to mitigate. Oh, I, the question is, is there no extra vulnerability? And uh, no, I don't believe it at all. I went through a security review with Lee, and, <laughs> and so I feel pretty confident there's no extra vulnerability in remote debugging. So I can type, so I'm just going to detach. I just want to show I detach the debugger if you do a good job. You see that it's back in the background and it's running and everything's good. How did you do that? Oh, the question is how did I do that? Okay. Right, it's the, the, the command was detach, D E T A C H. Um, what that does is it reverses the process of attaching the. Is it a function? No, it is a debugger command, a uh, special debugger command. It's only for. Yeah, the question is, uh, is a special function. It's actually a special debugger command. And this is a little bit of a problem right now, because um, this is just the way the debugger was created before you got on the team. But um, the debugger has special commands, and they're not PowerShell commands. So PowerShell is not aware of them. They only work and only parse when you're in uh, debug mode. And that's a little bit of a problem, because uh, it doesn't really fit in with the PowerShell um, command um, scheme. Like if you're at the top. Yes, there is help. You, you can type help or question mark and you get uh, a list of all the commands that are available in to you. In the debugger. I'm sorry. The question was. Uh, <laughs> prove it. Oh, prove it. Oh, okay. And the question is prove it. Okay. <laughs> Not a question. So there's the, uh, uh, the, the, the all the commands. So the, you type uh, help or H, I think maybe, or question mark. Can you scroll up so we can see what you oh, yeah. So yeah, so those are all the, the debug commands uh, from the command line.
I'm just cleaning up uh, for the next demo, so I think they have everything. So just looking at the time, um, I was going to save 15 minutes for questions at the end. Uh, I didn't get through nearly the stuff I wanted to. Um, but since we're getting questions uh, continually, maybe I'll just continue on and just interrupt you with questions. So now we're getting into the cool stuff, the stuff I really wanted to, to um, demo. Uh, if we run out of time, I'll be happy to continue if anybody's interested um, in the back room or something to show more of some of this stuff. Uh, also, I plan to do some blogging and a little bit behind on that, so there'll be some blogs that describe um, some of these new features. Um, so the next thing I want to talk about was uh, is uh, PowerShell run spaces. What are run spaces? This is actually a quote from Bruce Payette, who summed it up succinctly. Um, a run space is an instance of the PowerShell engine um, within a PowerShell session. Um, and the next question is, why should I care? Um, and the answer is normally you don't. You, you, you don't have to care because um, in uh, interactive host applications like PowerShell Console, PowerShell ISE, um, they create and manage run spaces for you. They also provide a nice debugger. In the case of a console, it's a command line debugger. In the case of ISE, it's a GUI debugger. Um, and you just don't have to worry about it. It's all done for you. However, PowerShell is more than just a console an interactive console. It's also a, a very powerful platform. Um, and it's possible through the PowerShell API to create um, other run spaces other than the run space that's created by you know, the host application. Um, and why would you do this? Uh, you can use uh, other run spaces to run script concurrently. Uh, that's done fairly commonly. In fact, I wrote a um, module called um, thread job. And what thread job does is runs um, script in a background job uh, normally when you use start job, it runs in the background job, but in a separate process, in a trial process. And so you get great process isolation, but it's pretty heavyweight. What my module thread job does is it runs jobs in a background thread and an extra um, run space. And so if you look at all the run spaces in the process, normally you just see one, like in a you know IC host application. Um, but if you're running thread jobs, you'll see a bunch of other uh, run spaces. Question? Oh, and the question, do I have that module published? I don't yet. And the reason I'm hesitating is we're thinking about maybe bringing that into PowerShell core. Um, <laughs> uh, I'll check again with, uh, I mean, I, I think the, uh, the concern is not to confuse people. Um, uh, so if we don't bring it into PowerShell uh, core, then uh, yeah, I will publish it. It's, it's pretty handy. Oh, I'm sorry. The question was, was the is the module I was talking about the the uh, thread job module was it published is available publicly, and it's not right now um, because we might bring it into the partial core. Uh, question. Uh, in PowerShell terminology, the question is, what is the difference between a run space and a thread? That's a great question. Um, a run space is really uh, a context in which script is run. You know, a thread is, is a thread of execution uh, in the OS. Uh, actually, I have a slide here I think might help. Uh, I just, this is like the only diagram. I just wanted to add this to, to kind of give an idea of how run spaces uh, fit in the scheme of PowerShell. And so it shows uh, a, a console host and the console host is hosting PowerShell session. And within that PowerShell session is a run space. And normally there's just one run space. It's one that the host application creates. But in that run space, what it contains are um, variable definitions, function definitions, uh, modules that you've imported, language restrictions. Um, it even includes a debugger object. So it'll actually be, it enables you to uh, debug script in that run space. So the run space is just like this you know, it's a container, it's a context in which the script runs. Um, and actually, I'm going to demonstrate uh, just a little bit uh, how easy it is to create a run space with PowerShell API. So maybe I'll go to that. <coughs> so.
So uh, just first of all, uh, um, we, we've kind of hidden the fact that there were run spaces in PowerShell because you don't really need to know, but it is possible to see the run space that the host has created. If you look at the host built-in very well, and then there's a run space property. And you can see that's the run space. That's the run space that's managed for you by the ISC. There's a new command that uh, called get run space because we're kind of exposing run spaces now because you can be interested in them. And it lists all of the run space that's in this PowerShell session. And what you'll see is the default run space that the uh, IC has created. You also see uh, a remote run space that was created. You see that it's closed right now, but it was created for the previous demo when I was showing the remote uh, editing. And then there's another run space that IC created that's open and available. I'm not sure what that is, but that exists <laughs> in this session right now. When you open a PowerShell tab, is that another run space in ISC? Uh, the question is when you uh, oh, uh, the question is when you create a new PowerShell tab, is that a new run space in the ISC? And the answer is yes. There is a new run space that's managed uh, for that tab. Uh, anyway, to create a run space in the PowerShell API is really simple. You use the run space factory class. Oh, the question is, is a run space more resource intensive than a job? Um, the run space is fairly resource intensive because it contains a lot of information. Um, it's kind of hard to say. A job is kind of a different thing. A job is just a, a way of, uh, of executing script in the background. I mean, it obviously has to involve a run space. Um, um, and so, as far as Resource, you know, they're probably equivalent. Space factory that allows you to create a run space. Oops. There's also a new property called name, so you can name your run space. Now, when we do a get run space, we'll see that uh, in the list. And there it is on the bottom. Uh, you notice that it's not open, it's not available for use. Uh, when you create a run space, you need to uh, call the open method on it. And now you see that the run space is available, uh, open, uh, and it's available for running scripts. Uh, I won't go any farther. Um, there's actually plenty of blog articles that talk about how to create run spaces and how to run, uh, you know, create commands and scripts and run against run spaces. Um, so I'll, I'll just move on from here. A question? Is there going to be um, a PowerShell way of creating run spaces, not just getting run spaces? Oh, the question is, is there going to be a PowerShell, I think, some command way of creating run spaces um, other than through the API? And maybe, not right now there isn't, but if there's a need for it, it's something we could certainly do. Uh, also, when you're done with the run space and you dispose it, it's a good thing to do because it is fairly resource heavy. And once it's disposed, uh, you won't see it in the list anymore. It's removed from the list. So th this is where I wanted to get a lot earlier, <laughs> and this is debugging run spaces. I think we can uh, have time to go through this uh, real quickly. 
Um, and then the attached to process, which is actually very cool too. Um, I don't know if I'll have time. It's something that maybe I can show uh, you know offline. And, and so, so go through the slide. So, you know, how do I debug a script running in run spaces? And the answer is, you know, ninety percent of the time, you don't have to worry about it because it's built in t to the um, host application, the console, the ISC. Um, but now that more and more tools are using PowerShell as a platform, so they're hosting PowerShell um, in their own processes to solve some kind of a problem. It's not an interactive. Um, um, Process and so the question is, you know, how do I debunk script that's running in run spaces and a tool that's hosting uh, PowerShell? Um, what I'll show here though is uh, how to just debug a run space in the same process and save the attached process for later. And so the solution is um, there's a new command like called debug run space. It's very similar to debug job. Again, attaches the host application loader to the run space. Um, if that uh, run space has to be running a script at the time, it will stop the script, break the script into the debugger. Um, if uh, the run space uh, is not uh, running the script at that time, the debugger will still remain attached to it and wait for a script to run. As soon as the script runs, then it will drop into the debugger. So I have a, a helper function, actually, uh, that kind of addresses your question, that helps create a run space, because it's kind of you know, uh, awkward using the, uh, uh, um, the, the API. And so what this does is it uh, uh, creates a run space, um, starts script running in the run space. Um, now if you do a get run space, you'll see that there's a new run space uh, uh, in the list. And you look at it, you see that state is open and that it's available, it's busy, so it's running script right now. And so now to debug it, you just use the debug uh, run space command. And this is looking familiar, I'm sure, now. Uh, again, we broke it into the debugger. Um, the source file is up, so you can uh, see the, the sort of source. And now you can just debug it in uh, the normal manner. If you look at the prompt, it kind of tells you what's going on. You see that you're in the debugger. The process uh, that you're um, in uh, it gives you the ID, and it gives you the name of the run space that you're debugging. And again, when you're done, you can do a detach, um, detaches the debugger, and then the script continues to just run uh, in the run space. So unfortunately, I think this is all the time I have. I think my time is up. Um, again, if you have uh, oh, a question. Can you tell about weight debugger? Uh, it's, it's, it's further down in the stack. Just tell them about it. OK. Um, that's one thing I wanted to get into, is if you notice that what we've done is we've debug script that's already running, but there's also the issue of how you debug uh, script from the start, right? Um, you know, if you can't set a breakpoint, what can you do? There's actually a couple of solutions. One that Jeffrey was talking about is a new command called wait debugger. And if you can change your script, you can just put the wait debugger command anywhere in the script. Um, and what happens when it executes, it sets the run space into, uh, enables debugging on the run space, which means that um, when a debug stop occurs, um, it will wait for a debugger attach and also runs the break all command. So it, it basically what it is, it says you know, stop at the very next execution point in the script and wait for a debugger attach. That's what the wait debugger means. Uh, there's also there's some other uh, things as well. Uh, one thing I also wanted to mention, I was going to show some DSC debugging, because uh, that's kind of the culmination of all these different features. And that's the ability to um, debug a DC script that's running on a remote machine inside a WMI host process, inside some, some kind of arbitrary run space. And that's actually possible to do right now with this, with this technology, but I don't have time to demo it, unfortunately. 
So yeah, so I think that's all.